Hi guys, Dave here for Southern Land Solo. Thanks for tuning in. I just received from Blackie Thomas his new haversack and multi bag, and I just thought I'd share the unboxing with you. Here's the item here. As you can see, I haven't opened it up. Uh, my introduction to Blackie Thomas's channel was when I was looking for a kukri. In the past, many, many moons ago, I had used a kukri in the jungle for about two years and found out what a, uh, quite a versatile tool it was. And I was looking at getting another one, mostly to keep on my shelf, really, as a memento and um, for a little bit of nostalgia's sake. But at the same time, I was looking at getting back out into the bush. And I knew what a versatile, useful tool the kukri was. So I did a search on YouTube and came across Blackie Thomas's channel. He had a series on the kukri. And his explanations, I uh, enjoyed them right from the start. Very detailed, uh, talked a lot about the history of the tool or the weapon as it is as well. Uh, he talked about the blade, the different parts of the blade and the function of each part of the blade, the different temperings in the blade, the angle of the blade, uh, you know, the, the whole range of it. So got hooked on it, really did and uh, went out and got myself that kukri. And I checked out his other videos as well, you know, bushcraft, woodscraft, um, shelter making, fire making, all that kind of stuff, navigation. And, you know, I was very, very inspired. And so those, those years ago when I was checking out his channel has brought me to this point now where I'm getting back out here and learning again, learning new stuff, rehashing the old information that I have and just enjoying myself. So. Uh, just thanks for that Blackie, very inspiring channel and uh, just like to thank for all the time and effort and I know expense as well that goes into running a YouTube channel. And so that's enough from me, let's look at it. A couple of bits of uh, supple jack there for a snack. I hope that wasn't rain coming down. Oh. Bag inside a bag. Oh yeah. Make sure they're down at the bottom. Very nice, very nice. Oh, while I'm here, making some kawakawa cow tea. So, haven't had my lunch yet. Not too bad, not too bad. Here we have it. Nicely wrapped, nicely packaged. Oh, there we go. There's our multi bag. Before we look at the haversack, let's open the multi bag. Oh, that's very nice. Old cotton canvas, and that's a wax cotton canvas on the outside. Belt loop there. I'll do a video on this one here later. Oh, very nice, very nice. Blackie's logo is the blackbird, and there's the blackbird down the bottom there. Multi bag. Yep, so here's our haversack. 
Very nice waxed, waxed cotton canvas. Do a quick test since we're here. I know, I know it's not even worth doing the test. I mean, this has got a lot of wax on it. It's in very good shape. But that water's just gonna bead right off. Yeah, that ain't getting in that fabric. Awesome, very nice. Oh, interesting. So, I haven't got a ruler with me, so I can't give you the measurements, but you can see the size of it. This is my other haversack here that I've been hang, hang, having for, oh, ever since I've been going back out in the bush for quite a few years. It's known as the Indy bag. Indiana Jones used these actual bags in the movies, uh, the Indiana Jones movies. Uh, should say Harrison Ford used these bags in the Indiana Jones movies. They're the Brit old British World War II gas mask bags. But I found it's just getting, it's, well, it's probably always been too small, and I'm having to really cram stuff in there. And uh, yeah, I like this. This is nice, really good size. The way Blackie's made is not really not really wide. He's made it long, so it can hang with the body and easy for getting in around the bush. And around here, the bush is very thick. A lot of supplejack vines, like a like a little jungle here. So something like this is going to be very useful. So. Big center pouch. This is just a quick review of it. Big center pouch there. And a zippered pouch on the lid. Yep, a lot of space there. And how it works is this just hangs. Hangs like that and the weight of the items that you have in there will keep it closed over. But what he's done is he's put the neck of it or the throat of it quite high. So it actually pinches over. So this opening here, when you put the lid over, it folds over the top. And it's pinched close, so even water can't get there. So the opening is actually pointing down now, so nothing comes out. Quite nicely done. It's sewn on one side there, and it's got brass D-rings on the other side. So that you can remove it. Quite nice. As you see, I kind of know, <laughs> I sort of know this item already because I've been on uh, really checking it out on his channel. And, um, you know, that's one thing I've, I've noticed about Blackie. Man, that fella, he can, he can tell a story or he can relate the history of an item or an incident or a, uh, a process. He can relate the history to you that can go back centuries. You know, he's a used to be a living historian, might, might still be um, in the living historian groups. But, um, wow, it's just very, very interesting to hear him talk um, about different items and processes and things related to bushcraft and woodcraft. I've been watching Blackie and I really appreciate the, the time and effort that he puts into his videos. And what's taken him decades of um, work and uh, success and failure to figure out he shares with us in a moment of time on a video and so i've sent him a couple of packages in the past just little small packages with some new zealand sort of stuff and you know just as a thank you uh for his videos because um i'm still learning how to light fires better you know we're all learning something and with me i'm really learning how to light fires better and i learn so much from his videos saves me having uh, saves me years of trial and error trying to learn it myself watch the video come out and practice what i'm learned what i've learned from his video so it's quite good and in one of the packages i sent him it was a small sort of gimmicky survival tool it was made in england from the 1980s and he did a little video on it i think the title of his video if you want to watch it it's called a special thank you i think is the title of his video uh, and he pulled it out and he started talking about this little um little survival tool, little gimmicky survival tool. Multi-tool, had a little saw on it, a little magnifying glass, a ruler, Morse code, a little chisel, bottle opener, all that kind of stuff on it. And um, he just started relating over the, over the decades of how these things developed. And he went right back into the 1980s, which was the big fad for hollow handle knives and the big Buckmaster type um, Rambo knives and also all the gimmicky little survival tools. 
but I guess those those are the times that led to where we are today with the really um, with the with the awesome kit that we have today. But he was able just to go back into the history of it, um, just holding that tool in his hand. You know, he's very well um, very well read, got a lot of experience, and relates it so well. I really appreciate that. And I know when I'm getting this haversack, you're kind of connected with the past. The as shown in his other videos, this haversack goes back, the design of it goes back at least to the 1800s, maybe even back to the 1700s. And, you know, you're, you're buying a bit of history when you get something like this. It's connecting you with the, in a way it connects you with the settlers and the pioneers and the old soldiers of centuries ago when they first went into these new lands. These are the sorts of things they carried. This is waxed cotton. You know, very basic design, but it's very, very basic design for this, but a lot of functions um, that this can do. But you're connected with those guys, and we come out here for recreation and uh, learning and, um, you know, for our interests and things like that. And those people back then, that was survival mode for them. That was their career. It's how they lived. And these were the tools and the items and the kit and the gear and the processes that they used in order so that they could survive in those harsh environments that they were, they were only just new to and were only just learning about. So when you get something like this, particularly a haversack of this sort of style, it really connects you back to the past. It really does. Let's look a bit about the capacity. What can it carry? Just two items here. I'm going to try out just to give us an idea of size. 32 ounce Nalgene. Oh, easy. <laughs> Feel kind of silly now. Um, here's my Nalgene bottle. Easily fits in there with room to spare. And you can see how it'll lie inside. Plenty of room. Tons of, sp tons of room left. And that's how high it sits in there. Pretty good, a lot of capacity. This is the uh, East German Poncho Tarp, East German Army, Poncho and Tarp. and room to spare. The top of the canteen is about here. So top of the canteen is about there. And you got all that room there as well. Plus this room on top of this, plus the lid as well. Pretty good, pretty good. Quick look at some of the features. Already looked into the uh, large capacity main pouch. Zippered pouch on the hood. And how black are you sewing this? As you can see, that's on an angle. Reason for that is it sits better when it's hanging across your body and it doesn't stick out as much getting through tight bush. Really nice. This guy here is removable. And he's done something in particular with the strap. Strap's hollow. You can put a bucksaw blade up there. And also um, subcal devices or subcaliber devices. Like a 12 or 20 gauge shotgun, you can put a little um, subcaliber barrel in it and you could fire a 22 or 9 mil through it they can fit in there as well. So I like it, eh? This, it's 
a lot of use, a lot of different things you can do with this bag, but there's no gimmicks. It's just well thought through design, utilizing what you have. It's like a, a multi-tool in a way, except the single one tool does so much. On the back, got a webbing strip. So you can attach, um, which I'll probably do, probably attach a, probably not a poncho, I'll probably attach my uh, Ridgeline rain jacket under there. And you just hang it from these. What it'll do, it'll just hang underneath like that. Yeah. Quite nicely done. I think that's all the features, all that I can remember anyway. Oh, yes. <clears throat> Another good reason for that is you can hang your knife from it. Hope I get this right. Yeah. Of course, not set up properly, just playing around with it. But that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah, I'm going to be looking forward to using this. It's going to get a lot of use. I've waxed this here, but um, it still seems to take on water for some reason. So I'm looking forward to this. This is like majorly waxed, there's no water getting in there. And in fact, I think um, another one of the uses of it, like he was saying, it's so well waxed, it should be able to hold water. To what extent, I'm not too sure, but um, I would say it's pretty watertight, I think. So a water carrying bag as well. Probably do another video on it, all, utilizing all those different functions. Yeah, well, that's awesome. Yeah, it really is an awesome bag. So thanks for uh, tuning in, guys, and thank you, Blackie, for the haversack. And for the multi-bag, I think money well spent. Money well spent. And um, also, thanks, Blackie, for uh, how you got it to me so quickly and the, uh, the way in which you sent it to me. I really do appreciate that. I really do. It's very good. So that's it, guys. If uh, you have any questions or comments, I'll answer what I can. And I would suggest you hop on to uh, Blackie Thomas his web channel and check out these multi bags multi bag in the haversack thanks guys see you later